Hi, I'm Tracy Ashbridge. I had an inquiry on Mathtastic the other day about times tables. Now, I do have plans to write a book about learning times tables, but it hasn't happened quite yet. It's coming. So I thought I'd share with you some ideas about how I teach students who are struggling in order for them to learn their times tables, because we all know that learning times tables is really important for much later maths. I'm working with a student currently in year seven, and because she knows her times tables, when we're working with fractions and percentages and decimals, it's relatively easy because she, she can see the relationships. You go, oh, five eighths, or, you know, well, you know, if I use 40, I can use that to help me. She, she has that understanding. So let's look. So if we look at a times table grid, if you know your 0, 1, 2, 5, 9, and 10 times tables, which are all the easier ones really, you actually only have a few that you have to learn by rote. And if you know that 6 times 2 is the same answer as 2 times 6, that also then halves how many you had to learn in the first place. So instead of around 120, you're down to around 60. When you've got all of these in place, you're down to around 14, which is much much more achievable for students i always talk to my students about being able to work out the answer like the best math best mathematicians in the world do not know the answer to every question but they do know how to work it out i would much prefer a child who i said what six times two who went two four six eight ten twelve rather than one that went i don't know which is very common so i really encourage them to use the strategies of what they know to work out what they don't know so zero times table is easy because it's always zero. And I explain that to children by looking at empty jars. So if we've got five times zero, five empty jars, we have nothing. So the answer is always going to be zero. Two times table, we teach children to skip count in twos from late prep or definitely in year one. And they can use that. So they just practice counting by twos and then use their fingers in order to work out how many times they've counted up. So that's, that's a good one. And we use exactly the same strategy for five and exactly the same strategy for tens. Although sometimes they learn that tens is, I'll oh, just add a zero on the end. But remember that that's, that won't work for the long term. It does work in the short term and it might get them started and build some confidence, but they need to know that actually everything's moving across one place value. So that gets us zeros. Ones are obviously straightforward. Twos, fives and tens. That's five times tables done with not too much effort. The nine times table, I've got a separate video on this one, but using the times table uh, by hiding your fingers. So you hide the top, the number of the questions. So th in this case here, I've got, I would have six times nine. So finger number six goes hiding. How many fingers are in front of that? There are five. How many are on the other side? Four, so 54. I usually do this with the hands facing the other way. So you can actually put them on the table and use the table to hold the fingers down because trying to hold your thumb down is fine, but trying to hold some of your other fingers down is really hard because other fingers want to get involved as well and it gets confusing. So that's nine times table. Then I teach children the square numbers. So six times six is 36. So a little rhyme. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Seven times seven is... 49 and they get these little rhymes and we just repeat them over and over um when i first started teaching we did eight times eight was nintendo 64 but 64 is an important number in maths and in computing so it actually has popped up i discovered in minecraft so a minecraft stack is 64 so that's another way to get that one locked in and once you've got those locked in you can use them to work out other times tables as I said before it's not about knowing every single times table fact by rote really really quickly for some students but having a way of working it out so other tricks five six seven eight is what we count in when we're dancing so 56 is the same as seven times eight so if you just flip those over you can get five six seven eight and students pick that one up really easily so with those you can then solve pretty much everything else so if you know six times six six times six is 36 then they can use that to work out six times seven so i teach the students that where the number is the same in this case there's a six in both questions so that's the number you've got to add on or subtract so in this case add-ons we're going to add on another six so 36 even if i have to count on six 37 38 39 40 41 42 ah da -da, 42 so use what you can so you find a subtraction fact close to the one you know or don't know sorry and then work towards the one you need to find out 
have a few games I like to develop fluency and adaptability. So pack of cards, I keep in the queen as a zero. I learned that from a podcast recently. I take out the, the jack and the king and the jokers, and then we turn over the cards and multiply by the table we want to practice and see how many you can do in a minute. Can you beat that? Can you get an extra one in a minute? Can you get through the whole lot in a minute? Uh, you can do the same with a 10-sided dice. How many can you answer in a minute? Multiplying by that one. The dice, if it rolls off or spins a lot, just can slow the game down there a little bit. But again, it's a way of practicing if they need time to generate random questions, but then time to think. Bingo games are great. You can just draw a nine grid and you put in the answers to the table you're working on. So if you're doing fives, you put in five, 10, 15, 20, etc. cetera. Um, but also you've only got nine, so you're gonna have to choose to leave one out. Um, if you use two six-sided dice, then you need to go with numbers to 12, but it does certainly encourage a bit more strategy because numbers that are in that, that sort of seven range with two dice are way more common than get, you're going to struggle because you're not going to get a one. Um, so that, that's a really good game. So I like those because it gives you time to practice fluency, loads and loads of practice, particularly for those children who need more practice in order for it to, to stick or for them to just practice working out how to get to the answer for those who it's going to be a long time before they have those numbers by rote they're going to need an awful lot extra practice but if they can work out the answer even if it takes them a few seconds that's way better than i don't know <laughs> so have a go at some of those games and um follow me on youtube